What is your dream overland camping truck? Well, in this case, I have this Jeep Gladiator. It's pretty new, it's about a year old. And it's built up to be a overland vehicle. It's got an alley cab camping set up in the back. It's got a suspension lift, bigger tires, and a lot of other toys that I'll show you in this video. So uh, this looks to me like it's done just right. It's really proportional and very functional. I have the owner, Joey, here, who will show me all the way around. So Joey, thank you for coming by. No problem, thank you for having me. So first of all, let's, let, let me ask you, why did you get the Gladiator in the first place? Um, I had Nissan Xterras in the past and uh, I wanted to go with something with a longer wheelbase um, and something solid front axle with some lockers. So that was the Gladiator, right? The Rubicon was it. So then you chose one, well first of all this is a nice color. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hydro blue. And then you chose to have a diesel engine under the hood. Correct. So let's, let's take a look. So why did you go diesel? Um, for the torque. It has uh, about 442 foot-pounds of torque from the factory. Yeah. So you test drove a couple of them, like the gas one and the diesel? I did. I drove the gas first uh, in the in the four-door version, yeah. and then um, and then once I drove the diesel, it was it was the obvious choice, hands yeah. down, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. So so first of all, you know, when you're building an overland rig, right, uh, range is important, mm -hmm. right? You don't want like, for example. You've taken this out like near Moab, right? Uh, this vehicle's already been all the way to Massachusetts, down into Arizona and uh, Utah. So it's been all over the place already. So you don't want to be stopping every like 200 miles or looking for a fueling station, right? So, so I think diesel helps with that. Correct. Um, when I'm fully geared, fully packed, all my tools, I'm still getting about 17 miles per gallon and I'm, I drive it. I drive it, so I'm not trying to get the best gas mileage. Yeah. I actually put my foot in it. Yeah, so that, that's pretty good. That's not too bad, considering uh, you gave the suspension lift. So let's let's talk about that next. How did you choose this lift, first of all? Um, so a lot of the people were doing a two-inch lift and putting 40s under there, um, which to me doesn't look right between the fender and the wheel. I wanted that space. Yeah. So I went with a four and a half inch lift, um, which is a little bit higher center of gravity, but I'm okay with that. And then I did the, I upgraded the suspension to the Fox uh, 2.5s um, and started from there. Yeah, and then you put the 37 on this, right? 37s, I didn't want to go 40s. Uh, a, I don't want to change a 40 on the trail uh, by myself. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, uh, it puts more wear and tear on your, on your vehicle too. Yeah, I mean, these axles are pretty good. Uh, but you know, when you go bigger tires, everything changes, right? Maybe even the brakes, you know, needs to be addressed, etc., etc. Correct. Um, with this setup, I'm about eight feet tall on 37s with this with this four and a half inch lift. I still fit in my garage. I can still drive through a, a drive through. Uh -huh. um, I can still do 90 on the highway. Um, so for me, the all around drivability. And when you start putting 40s on, you might have to trailer it or gear uh, lower gear. Um, and then you just have to find bigger stuff to run over. And you re-geared these axles, right? Correct. Uh, they're the stock housings, but they're re-geared to 488s. Okay. And you got you have the stabilizer over there too. Uh, correct. Uh, I did a, a Fox upgrade on the stabilizer. We did a, um, a steer smart system. Uh, these have electric steering pumps and that just helps so they don't overheat. Okay. Uh, some of the guys are having problems steering once they get these out and off-road them. All right, and while we're still in the front, um, you did this bumper as well. Yes, my buddy Chris over at Hefty Fabworks uh, designed this bumper, and uh, uh, I like it. It's clean, it's short, it's stubby, and it just has everything you need. It's all function and no extra anything. Yeah, lights and a winch. The tire you choose is uh, Cooper Discover. Did you consider other tires, or why'd you go with this one? So, my I've had Xterras for 20 years, and all the way from as long as I can remember, I ran a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac. I had very good luck with those tires yep. from Vermont to the Slick Rock, um, and uh, they don't make them in a 37 inch. So this is my first uh, branching out, so I was gonna try the Coopers. Uh, so far, they've been good. Um, I don't think they're as good in the snow and ice, but everywhere else, they seem very capable. I'm pretty yeah. happy with them. And on the highway, they're fine? A just, little bit just, of noise, but not okay. terrible. Okay. Um, not terrible at all. And I went with the Method uh, beadlocks. Uh, they were a little bit lighter than some of the other brands out there, and I just like the look of the Methods. And if we step back here for a second, uh, I think the truck just looks proportional now, right? Yeah, I mean, some of the stock ones just look, you know, weird with the small tires and, you know, wheels, and this, 
I think this looks right. I thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, that was done on purpose. I wanted uh, space between the wheel wells. I wanted it to sit level, even when I'm loaded up in the back. Um, I have some stuff in there today, but not my full full off-road setup. Okay, and you did the springs as well, right? Correct. We did uh, the four and a half inch springs in the front. We did uh, six and a half in the rear. So I put a heavier duty six and a half in the rear. And when that six and a half sagged down, the top of the spring acted like a spacer um, and it just sat perfect. Yeah, because when you obviously add equipment like, you know, your alu cap here, camper, even no matter which vehicle you have, right? Big truck, heavy duty truck, mid-sized truck, you want to have the suspension work as a whole system, right? You have to calculate the weight that you're going to run. Yeah. Um, if you put a weaker spring, every time you hit a bump, the spring's going to compress. You're just going to burn out your shocks a lot faster. You also did a skid plate. Um, that's an aftermarket skid plate. I mean, sorry, you can't quite see it from here. From the side, you can. Those are the metal cloak skids. Um, okay. And uh, they fit great. Um, and uh, I really like them. I even like the color. So you could not put a 37 spare in here. Um, Did you I, try or I, is it just doesn't? I, I, I don't want it under there. Okay. Um, eventually, it'll, when I build a custom rear bumper here, it'll be on a swing away on the back. Oh, um, I see. But for now, it's stored inside the alley cab uh -huh. um, where it's dry and out of the elements, which is kind of nice too. Um, but if I go in the mud or I get stuck, um, get a flat and I can't get it out from underneath the vehicle. So that's, that's, I don't want to struggle with that. Yeah, I gotcha. I, I can see you, this is a little bit bent. So you've been using this. I, I use it, yes, yes. On the side, you can kind of see. This is not a mall crawler. <laughs> <laughs> and th this is what the hitch is for, really, right? It's, it's to help you descend the rock, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. We'll get a nice custom bumper on the back of there. Okay, so I've seen several alley cabs. Uh, like we, we did a couple of videos with a Tacoma with a similar setup. First of all, this one fits the cab pretty well too. Yes, so a lot of the a lot of the alu cabs will sit a lot higher from the roof to the underneath of the alu cab. Yeah. Um, so there's two things. One, I feel like I, I do have better aerodynamics as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, alu cab makes an aluminum table that goes in there, so I I can't run that with the gladiators. Um, but they uh, uh, Juniper Overland did a great job with the fit and finish and installing this thing. Um, I, I just love it and it doesn't it looks like it's built for the truck it does it looks like it just came out of the factory and th this also makes a clean transition here as well and by the way you can you can lift out the front panels too correct i can still take off my two front panels i don't do anything with the rears well, obviously, obviously yeah yep. yeah all right so let's go inside because this is pretty cool all right let's do it talking about kind of a dream setup right <laughs> i ran a rooftop tent for years uh -huh. and um it was uh, pretty cold, so I do have a heater now. Okay. Um, and that's a game changer. So I can camp year round now instead of just summer. Um, I have a, a diesel heater in the corner. I got to move some stuff, uh, on but I'll show there? that to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, can we start like opening this up and Absolutely. just kind of show how that works? My favorite thing about the alley cab and anybody that has a rooftop tent with a ladder and has to undo the covers. Yes. That's it. We're done. We're Two ready. latches? We're ready to camp. Two latches. That's, that's it. it. Okay. It takes less than 30 seconds to open this thing up. Okay. So that's awesome. So then let's kind of go inside and kind of show, show, show it. Sure. Yeah. So you don't have to run. Um, you don't have to run a ladder. This is the bed. Um, someone that's over six foot five can sleep on just this portion um, without having to close this door. Okay. Um, this extra about two foot section. I have two full size pillows from the house. None of those small camping pillows. And I store those right up here. And then when you want to really open up the space, it's like the old Murphy beds. Uh huh. So I have a flat section here where I can prep food if I need to. I can also lower this at that time. Um, there's a ton of storage in here. I just, everything functions. Um, I do have some map reading lights. So cell phone chargers, snake lights, and that's on both sides. And your 37 fits nicely. Uh, yes, it does take up a little bit of space. And when I get that out on the back uh, for the custom rear bumper that'll be out and that'll free up some space in here yeah totally but but right now i mean it's floating off the floor a little bit but it's it just 
feels just right over Correct. here. Correct. Okay, so now you also have, you said the heater. Uh, where yeah. is it, where is it? The heater is over work? here. Um, so on the left over here, I have a control panel and that runs my lights, that runs um, all of my, uh, the diesel heater. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I see, it's down here. Yes. Yeah, I've been in Moab, by the way, when it's like 32 degrees. <laughs> yes. It... <laughs> and you need, you need some heat. I camped out the night before Thanksgiving on, up on uh, uh, Coney Flats. Uh-huh. It was 12 degrees outside. Ooh, okay. And I slept back here with a uh, t-shirt, shorts. I actually had to open one of the windows because it was, uh, it was so hot. So how does this fuel? I mean, where is this fuel coming from? Oh, great question. <laughs> so uh, my buddy's over at Juniper Overland. Yeah. I didn't want to run an external uh, fuel cell. Yeah. So um, this, because it's a diesel motor. You have a diesel tank. I have a diesel tank. Okay. So they just plumbed a line right into the, the, the stock fuel tank. Okay. So I don't run the motor at the same time I run the heat. That's the only downside to it. But most time you stop at your campsite, shut your motor off, come back here. It heats up in about eight minutes and it, I get all the fuel. If I got fuel in the tank, I don't have to stop. And you can, you know, I mean, you could spend multiple days there, right? Because you have a huge fuel supply, right? Correct. Not like a little, little tiny tank or something. Correct. I never okay. have to worry about running out. As long as there's fuel in the vehicle, I am good to go. That's pretty sweet. Okay. And then you have side panels that open up. Can I open this uh, passenger one up? Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> uh, I'll take a iced tea and a cheeseburger. All right, cheeseburger and iced tea. <laughs> we got this. All right. Um, All right no. I do have a National Luna fridge. Okay. Um, it does have a freezer on one side and the refrigerator on the other. Okay. Um, and so sometimes you bring ice cream to friends on the trail and they really like it. Boom, right there. Sweet. And you were saying um, you also have like, you know, there's screens here and there's a blackout shade as well. Correct. So if, it, if you're in a buggy area, you can zip the screens down. Uh, the screens drop on the back door, both side windows. You could set up a chair in here and literally sit in a screened in porch. Okay. And of course the tailgate is gone. So you have to remove the tailgate to, to make the setup. Correct. But how much weight does this add? Like without all your extra without gear? Without the gear? Uh, I believe the Audi cab weighs about 450 pounds. Um, and uh, uh, it's all aluminum, so it, it looks heavier than it is, but it's it's actually really light. Yeah, so you're not, like, usually if we have a full-size truck, right, with a bigger camper, that's like 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds. I mean, those campers can be very, very heavy. Correct. When so, I'm fully loaded, I believe I'm probably around maybe 1,000, 1,200 tops for gear. Yeah, and of course your suspension is done right for that weight as well. Yes. Cool. Um, we have 160 watts of solar. There's a solar panel on the roof okay. um, and that charges this, uh, this marine deep cycle battery. Um, so uh, from here. That, runs my, that runs my fridge, my diesel heater. Um, and I've, gone, I've let the fridge run for a week straight um, and it, it's fine. It okay. doesn't drain the battery. So I have to ask you this before we open up the awning and uh, relax here. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, like, how much was this built? I mean, yes, you got the diesel gladiator, right? Mm -hmm. But how much was overall, like, all the modifications you've done? So the, the vehicle equipped like this, I got, I didn't opt for leather and I didn't get some of the safety features, um, like the blind spot and that sort of stuff. Uh, the vehicle is about 63.5 was the MSRP, somewhere in there. Brand new. Yeah. Brand new. Okay, yep, okay. bought it brand new. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you add about, I think the rims, the tires, the suspension was in the 16 to 17 grand range. Um, and the Alu cab with labor and the way you see it here, with the fridge, the heater, all that, I think was right around the 20, 20, 22 grand range. Yeah, for for the camping setup. For the camping here. setup. Yeah, and uh, so actually that's not a bad deal for the camping setup because those campers can be 30, 40 grand on bigger trucks, right? Oh, absolutely. So. I, I like how it's it fits with the body line. I see a lot of campers on the back of pickup beds and they stick out a foot, you know? Yeah. So I cranked up the diesel heater. <laughs> I can kind of hear it and you can feel hear it. it. <laughs> the diesel heater is on. So
so so this is almost like I don't know with the with the vehicle like a hundred thousand dollar. I'm maybe just, a, just under that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right around probably the ninety. Yeah. Ninety-ish range. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's open the awning. The awning is here too. All right. Uh, the exhaust for the diesel heater. Yeah. I'm sure someone's going to ask is underneath there. Thank you for <laughs> showing that. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, there's no condensation um, when I run this heater. A lot of uh, heating setups, uh, they'll say that they get condensation inside their tent. I have not experienced that yet. Okay. Um, a little table here. That's pretty Coffee nice. in the morning. Um, your lights have three different uh, settings for white, and if you long hold them at night, they'll go to red. Um, and you got three different settings for red. Okay. Was it? Uh, did you have to wait for this cap, uh, alley cap? Were they hard to get? I mean, some of these parts. At the time, it was about four months or so, four to five months. Um, they do make this in silver too. Okay. Um, the silver is a longer lead time than the black. I gotcha. Okay. Well, that's pretty. I mean, I, so you've been happy with everything you've done? Everything that that uh, that is installed on here, function-wise, everything just functions and flows. It's got a ton of storage. It's super easy to set up and take down. I, I really have no, I have no complaints about it at all. It's fantastic. It's the most expensive option, but the quality and the fit and finish is worth it, in my opinion. Yeah. I gotcha. All right, well, let's set up the awning and thanks, thanks for sharing this, dude. Oh, no problem. So normally I have my little step stool, which I did not bring today, but. But we can do that. Just flip the cover up and over on the corner there. Got it? Yep. Okay. That goes back. Yep. I'll need your height one more time. Okay. So this slides into that. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Are we gonna fly away? It's kind of windy. We're not gonna fly away. <laughs> uh, there. there you go. Just line that up. Yep, got it. Tight, and then just pull on that. Okay, hold on. Nice so, and tight. Nice and tight. Okay. Okay. There. there you go. Was that that easy? That's it. Oh, it's got the legs too, or at least one leg. Correct. Okay. So, um, this is a solid aluminum frame. That bar will lift up if you want your runoff from your rain. Okay. The pole will go down to the ground if you need to tie it down. Yeah, but 90% yeah. of the time, I just run it like this. There's no strings to trip over when you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and it throws a lot of shade. Yes. Well, Joey, <laughs> thanks for bringing this by. <laughs> I think, at least for me, I mean, you could also tow a trailer in theory. I, I mean, think it'll tow 5,000 pounds. Yeah, I mean, it's a diesel, yeah. Yep. I, I think they might be rated for more. I mean, I'm not sure with all the uh, suspension mods you did. But anyway, for me, I, I think this is also, it's a mid-size, it's not a full-size truck. I think this is a kind of a dream setup. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Awesome. Once again, thanks. Thank you for having me.